the putty mixed to a consistency that we like, okay? Then now it's time to do what's called bedding, okay? And what bedding is, is, is take, you take the glass out, okay? And you put a nice bed of putty up underneath it and then press the glass back down into it, okay? That creates a nice seal, okay? Um, some people will use caulking, you know, put it around. I advise against that. And one of the reasons why is, although it works very well, okay? And it's got these adhesive properties that if you caulk that in, that caulking is usually so strong that if something happens and you take the glass back out, you'll never get it back out again, all right? That's one reason. The second reason is that when you put this putty at the bottom of it and squish the glass down into it, okay? Then you put this on top of what you squished down already, then it all blends together in a unified seal. You see that? Okay? If you put a different material down there that's like caulking, that's water-based, it will never marry together. All right, so that's another good reason to do it to give you a better quality result in the end. Okay, you know, uh, is caulking it faster? Yeah, kind of in the short term. Long term, you might be setting up your future buddy to hate you, you know, <laughs> and you don't want that to happen. So, I'm just gonna pop this glass out, I'm gonna clean it up like this here, here, okay, now I guess I'm going to put my gloves back on because I just didn't want to get that stuff all over my um, glass, I'm going to clean it anyway, but you'll see, so I'm going to get some of this putty, okay, now this is not as easy as it looks, okay, I make it look easy, um, that I got lots of experience. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, take a ball of this stuff right here, and I'm gonna push it off of my thumb onto this little shelf here, okay? Every window has a little shelf. That's what the glass sits on, okay? Um, that's called the glazing rabbit, R-A-B-B-E-T. Not rabbit as one that hops, but rabbit as in rebate. In the old English rebate um, means to take something away, you know, like so. It's a rebate, something's been taken away. So, so I'm gonna just lift it up, and I'm gonna start um, just shoving it in there, okay? And it's, it's pretty easy for me, but I kind of like, like to describe it as like if you've got some mud on your shoe. You know, and you've got one of those things outside the front door to scrape the bottom of your shoe off. That's kind of what it's like, you know? It's scraping something off like that. But you're doing it in a controlled way. Isn't that nice? Look at that. So, now I'm lifting it up because see how my hand's underneath? That's very helpful, actually. Okay. Another thing I would suggest, and this might not be so, it's easier said than done, but it's to go right and left handed in this, this enterprise, okay? If you start trying your hand at the right and left handed techniques now, okay, while you're still cumbersome, okay, then you will develop both um, right and left sides at the same time and become that much better okay so going right and left hand is that's just the way to go okay so i'm gonna put that there first my glass set it back in now watch i'm gonna push it down okay and when i do watch how it's gonna squeeze out okay Okay, I'm just gonna gently press. You don't wanna press too, too hard, because, you know, press too, too hard, you're gonna like, 
And that's not what you're trying to go for, right? The other thing too is when you start to do old work, okay, like old work, like old window sashes, and you want to take the glass out and put it back in, one of the things that you want to make sure that you're doing is you're, you want to make sure that your glazing rabbit is clear of debris because if you get like a little rock or a piece of old glazing or something under, the, under there, and you press down on it, like on both sides, you can break your glass that way, okay? Um, see how I'm just pressing it down like that? Doing the, yeah, okay. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this around. Do the other side, same way, okay? And doing this, you don't you don't need to worry about the this glass being clean because in the end, it's still gonna be dusted off or cleaned off. Correct? Yeah, we're gonna clean it off. I've got this uh, stuff, this powder that's um, in one of these um, buckets around here. I call it my magic dust. What it really is is powder drywall compound. See right there, the Easy Sand Twenty. That's all it is. And basically, what that is is a combination of, or it's a blend of calcium carbonate and plaster of Paris, okay? So, just sound like that, okay? Isn't that nice? You guys are going to get a chance to do this right after I glaze this entire window sash, okay? Certain things you got to know about it, okay? And I'm going to show you everything I can, everything I can remember to tell you about glazing the sash. Okay, so I got all my bedding in, okay, and I'm just going to put my glass back in like that, press it down. Okay, I don't want to be in a hurry, okay? You can't really be in a hurry with glass anyway, you know what I'm saying? Because that's when you invite danger, I guess. Okay, I got this other really cool tool I'm getting ready to show you in just a minute. It's called a point driver, okay? And what a point driver is, is it's a, uh, it's the device that shoots little pins out that holds the glass in place. And it works like a stapler, okay? There, that's, that's almost bedded, okay? So I've got this guy here. This is called a point driver, okay? And what happens, what this does is it shoots out little diamond points. See those? Okay? And those diamond points are what holds the glass in place. Okay? Now, let me just stop here for a second and uh, see if I can find... Uh, I bought these this morning at Home Depot. Okay? And what these are, is these are standard issue glazing points that you would find at, you know, the Home Depot or those or whatever. The problem with these is they're too big, right? They're too big to really do what you need to do. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you why, because one of the things that, um, that you, when, when you, you're going to see when I go to tool this, okay, the, the beauty in something small like, like one of these diamonds is that it's easy for the glazing putty to ride over the top and conceal these underneath. These are so big that you know they stick out you know it's like you're trying to play hide and seek you know but your feet are sticking out from under the closet door you know everybody knows you're there so it's, it's, it's like it's like they're intentionally missized to make you not want to do it anymore people who use these they actually have to clip them if they're gonna like do a good work okay let me 
because you don't want these sticking out, they'll rust. You know? You know, so anyway, I'm gonna pop these guys in. Okay, I'm gonna put in what maybe two per side. Gonna do this too on yours okay um, sometimes you know you, you put one up here one up there but i don't know maybe i will how's that it won't be bad it's not gonna hurt anything i don't think i'll pull one down again I do. okay so now this is a glazing hammer okay notice how it's got an angled head on it that's so that it can slide up against the glass and slide flat and hit your little glazing point and knock it in, okay? And you, you want to knock it in, okay? So that when you go put your putty in and you're going to tool it, that you don't get that the little foot sticking out of the closet, you know what I'm saying? So. I left one out too far. You'll you'll see that I'll have to uh, go and knock it in again, even further, or knock it over to the side a little bit. Last thing I'll say about about bedding, okay, is I want to demonstrate that to finish your bedding, you need the stuff that's got on the other side that's squeezed out. You need to get that off so that you can see the perimeter lines on the inside, okay. So and that's just you lift it up. I'm gonna lift it up like this, and I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna start to carve it out, okay. And as I do, you'll be able to see those distinct lines emerging. And those are real important because that's, those, are, those are your guidelines now. Okay? Because you don't want your glazing putty that you're going to tool in a minute to be seen on the inside of the sash from my point of view. You want it to be underneath. See how that works? Okay? If you, I mean... Can you let it overlap? 100% you can. Will it be effective in its performance? Sure, but it won't be so nice looking. You know what I'm saying? And everybody will look at you like, huh, look at that work. I mean, most people won't even know, to tell you the truth, but that, that, that is how you do the best work. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I got this stuff here. Keep this in my my little ball here. Uh, I got my, my magic dust there. I got my one at the top too, darn it. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. So when you guys do this on yours, you know, it'll be a lot easier because you're only going to do the equivalent of one square. 
okay? So you see why, I'm, you'll, you'll see, I think you can see why I'm starting you off with the one square doing this, okay? In the past, I've given one of these six lights to everybody and dude, it's been brutal. I mean, it really has, you know? And so I'm trying to, uh, trying to ease, ease the students, you guys, into it a little bit more delicately, you know, and instead of throwing you into the sharks and saying, it's a six light, man, you gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's tough. You know, you got all these little corners you gotta do and uh, you got all these little lines and all this stuff and this, it's, it's not easy, so. But that's, that's bedding, all right? That's properly bedded. And so with that, we can end that video.